What's up, everybody? This is Errol from ErrolTheAventurer.com. You are listening to Errol the Adventurer, the podcast. How's everybody doing today? I personally have been feeling achy and tired, but I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. So, I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope it gets better for you, no matter who you are. So, today's topic, I was thinking about race, racism, xenophobia, which is basically just um, a fear or dislike or disdain for um, things that are different being, I mean, like when it comes to people, um, sociologically speaking, I guess, things that are different, cultures, languages, skin colors, hair textures, eye colors, religious beliefs, philosophical beliefs, et cetera. <laughs> Um, but most specifically, I was thinking about racism. Not that it means anything to anybody, but I am extremely proud of this generation, generations to come, and the generation before us. Because we've, we've really been going in the paint um, with this whole... <laughs> making love not war thing because some people like went to war against people um for being different and what that um a lot of those people do they made love <laughs> they made a whole lot of love and made a whole lot of pretty babies in the process and so now you got people i mean they got grandkids now, and it's just an eye opener. It's like it's almost like God was like noticing what was going on with between our petty differences, and God was like mix up the people, and that's what we did. We did it. We're doing it. We did it. I'm gonna give you a prime example. Um of the present and what could possibly be the future. So, um, we can start, we'll start with me. We'll start, um, I actually have four children by the same woman. We broke up in 2013 at the time of this recording that I'm doing this podcast, it is 2020. I'd been I had been with her since since we were in high school, really since um year 2001. Um, and it just so happens, I don't know if you know this about me. But I'm what a lot of people call black or African American. Um, I looking at my picture. Technically, I could be from like Papua New Guinea or Melanesian, but I'm not. I'm actually of of American descent, African and American descent. Very much um, American, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> but um, yeah, like Mississippi blood, even though. I was born in Albany. Um, a lot of my people came from Shibuta, Mississippi. Um, we actually have a Wikipedia page <laughs> um, called the Rap Road Community, R-A-P-P. And it's one of the first time, or it's one of the few examples when an entire community <laughs> left and started a community somewhere else, which made it significant. Um, it was post underground railroad but still kind of underground railroad because after slavery um a lot of 
ex-slaves were still tied to the land um, as sharecroppers. And they were legally legally in debt um, to landowners in the South. And they were threatened with prison, which they would still continue manual labor. So that's why every, like, a lot of um, my family and uh, about 23 other families um, got the hell out of Shibuta, Mississippi, Clark County. Um, in the 50s, in the 1950s, um, starting in the 1930s, um, I believe his name was Pastor Parson or Reverend Parsons, but he orchestrated that whole thing, and they bought land, eventually ended up buying land in Western Albany, which is still under the threat of eminent domain, because Albany, New York is expanding, but we had that land for quite some time now before it was even developed before there was like the malls and stuff out there and now there's people want to build condominiums and stuff like that but you could just look that up on wikipedia um yeah and it's pretty cool because every year we have a family reunion and there's about five thousand of us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a pretty huge family. And I grew up down in Florida. Like, I lived in Albany till I was eight years old. And, um, but I didn't grow up with that. But I actually have a pretty huge family, even though I grew up um, relatively alone <laughs> when it comes to um, family bonds and things like that. Um, my other side, Slaughter's pretty big too. Um, they're from Alabama. And my dad, he's a retired drill sergeant, first class. Um, my mom's granddad <laughs> fought in the Civil War, Company G, 54th Regiment, Massachusetts. Very, very American stuff. <laughs> Just not the type of stuff that you um always hear. So, moving along to my kids. Their mother, ironically, is half white and half Filipino. She looks mostly Asian, or what you would call Asian, East Asian-like, because technically... Um, Indians are Asians, and so are Arabic people. You know, one's South Asian, one's um, Southwest Asia, technically. It's all Eurasia. Um, and ironically, her her father's people is from the same area of New York, relatively, <laughs> that my. Um, Some of my answers are they're from more of the um, Canadian border, St. Lawrence River area. My my mother's granddad's from Canajahari, which is is not very far from there. It's not Albany, um, but it's, it's like really upstate. And my kid's grandmother is from the Philippines. Palawi and Zambales and that's pretty cool <laughs> we met through a mutual acquaintance one of my old best friends and her cousin anyways now if you just looked at one of my kids well if you looked at three out of four of my kids they all look pretty much like if they spoke a language fluently, you would just have to believe them. If it was Spanish, or if it was Arabic, or if it was Indian, <laughs> or if it was Tagalog, whatever language that they 
chose to learn and speak, you would have to believe them. You couldn't deny them. They are brown haired or brown skin, like light brown skin, like cinnamon skin, um, straight hair to curly hair children. Um, my oldest daughter is what you would call high yellow in the black community. She's pretty much clearly mixed black and white. Um, but that's just it be just makes the story even that much more greater. <laughs> Cause I was absolutely sure that all my kids would have Afro and have like you know, Chinese looking eyes. I'm telling you how I was thinking. I know what's politically correct or not. <laughs> That's what I thought they were gonna look. They all came out with straight hair and and like brown skin and that's because I also have like like most Americans have a lot of Native American blood, you know, especially if you're from Mississippi, Mississippi regions and stuff like that. A lot of mixing. There was a lot of there was a lot of mixing going on even before now between blacks, whites, and um, Native Americans, and eventually Chinese um, when they start coming over, because people are people, and people are attractive, and people like the fuck. So, I mean, it's kind of really that simple. Um, as far as attraction goes, anyways. So, my thing is, and then, and then they have an uncle. They love their Uncle Jay. His Uncle Jay has, um, a white one, my homie girl, a man, uh, what we'll call her? Shamantha. <laughs> um, but, and and my little my little niece or my ex niece or whatever it was, cause she was my niece for a long time. Um, I call her Stella. Stella looks like a straight white girl. You know, she's she's cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And then I have a nephew. Now, he's my sister's child. He's half Puerto Rican. Half bright-skinned Puerto Rican. Like, like when you go to New York and you see the Puerto Rican, you, like, you see people, you don't know if they're Italian or if they're Irish or if they're Puerto Rican. He's one of them types. You feel me? And my nephew, he has a light complexion. Now, he has a baby with a chick who's also Puerto Rican, half Puerto Rican, but half white. <laughs> so my grandniece comes out very um, light. She has very light eyes, very light colored hair, but wavy, but naturally like brown. Like. So my question is, how much can race or what we think of as race truly exists because I know we have phenotypes and genotypes. Um, race, most people say race doesn't really exist. Um, how people look and what their genes are, you know, can be very circumstantial. Um, but my thing is, how much can it really exist if? If one of my four kids chooses um, a spouse or a partner of any what we call race or ethnic group, that's probably what that child is going to look like, which means I can rightfully assume that I probably will have um, a grandchild that looks like Stella, like almost all white. I'll probably have a a grandchild that looks like me, like pretty much all black, 
And I'll probably have a bunch in the middle that that are just brown and <laughs> in the mix. These are these are really huge facts and it can go back and forth. So what's the point of arguing about race if somebody can jump a race like in a couple of gen- uh, generations? Um, black people have actually been doing that since we've been in America, pass, what they call passing. Um, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for bad reasons. <laughs> you know, sometimes they act like um, they're oppressors. Sometimes they're like, I'm going to use this shit to get in with their oppressors and, and you know, um, help everybody else. I mean, we all in the same boat these days. There's just no doubt about that. We are all in the same boat. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what Kool-Aid you're drinking. <laughs> but we all in the same boat. You just might not know it yet. <laughs> Everybody get their rude awakening day eventually. But I digress. I don't want to be divisive. I just want to make a point. What's the point of hating another race or what we call race? Because race don't even exist. <laughs> it's so frustrating trying to try to explain this, <laughs> but you have to do double talk. Because on one hand, you say, "What's the point of race being um, anything to be concerned about?" And on the other hand, you have to acknowledge that race don't even exist. It's just something that we see. Say, oh, they're different from, you know what I'm saying? But they're not really different. And I've proven that (laughs) with my life as an experience. (laughs) As me, my kids, and their mother, the guinea pigs. And I guarantee you, I'm probably going to have blonde grandkids, Afro grandkids, Chinese-looking grandkids. Grandkids (laughs) could be anybody from anywhere in the world. And their granddaddy black, black and crazy, depending on who you ask. Like, they be like, that's your granddaddy? Hell yeah, that's my granddaddy. That actually happened a lot um, in the Spanish world. You know what I'm saying? Donde tu abuela? Donde tu abuelo? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of these uh, Spanish people are actually, like, have a lot of African heritage. They have a lot of European heritage. They have a lot of Native American heritage. And it pops out whenever it wants to. Anything. <laughs> like the child. Their children. Um, Latinx. I, I, I guess that's the new term. Um, or Spanish speakers. I'll just say that. That's harder. I don't know. Um, because Latinx is. It's, it's not like chauvinistic. Saying Latinos. Or Latinos. That's. I don't know, I guess it's gender divisive. I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to get along. But uh, you sometimes you don't know how they baby going to come out because they're so mixed up, you know? And that's really a beautiful thing. Brazil, Brazil's another example. Little known fact, Arabs are also, okay, everything around the Mediterranean <laughs> is like the original um, place where stuff like that happened. But I digress. Why are we fighting, or why would anybody fight over something like how somebody look when your blood, like my, in a generation or so, my descendants could look like a lot of different people in the world, they'd be like, that's my cousin. That's like, no, not my fake cousin. No, that's my blood cousin. <laughs> like, this one looks like he's from Europe. This one looks like he's from Africa. This one looks like he's from Vietnam, <laughs> Cambodia. This one looks like he's from Mexico. I don't know if there's any difference between the last one. But anyway, <laughs> but it'd be like, no, that's my blood cousin. That's my, we're like, Flesh and Bones family. <laughs> I'm not be like, yo, that's my cousin. <laughs> like, no, that's my real cousin. All these motherfuckers you're looking at are my blood cousins. <laughs> they look like the world, bro. 
We did it. We fucking did it, bro. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Fuck you if you're hating too, bro. Because, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people that hate black people love their black grandkids. A lot of black people that hate white people love their white grandkids. You know what I'm saying? Everything, everybody else in the middle. You know what I'm saying? I go to show you that love has to conquer everything. Love conquers like a motherfucker. I mean, violence, I guess it can be fun. And it sounds good when you're talking about it. But shit, people get hurt real easily, real fast. Make a love is better. Nice is good. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Being nice is good. Why do people be mean when you know nice is good? I don't understand that. Like, if you have the option of somebody being mean to you and the option of somebody being nice to you, why would you choose me? It goes the other way around. If you could choose to be nice to someone or be mean to somebody, why would you be mean? It don't just affect the other person. It totally affects you, too. It totally affects you, too. It slowly changes you into something that you... You hopefully originally didn't want to be. And eventually you become a fucking monster. And not the good, awesome kind, like the Hulk. <laughs> Superman. <laughs> He's a monster, too. <laughs> no, no, you, you be like Hitler monster. Eventually, if you keep feeding it, do you really want to be Hitler? Like, people, people... There are people in this world who think it's kind of cool. Like, do you really want to be Hitler? Do you even know what that means? Have you ever seen people suffer? Have you ever been a cause of people suffering? Have you suffered? Why would... I don't know. I can't answer those questions. You know? It's just weird. Um... Anyways, I'm going to move along because, yeah, I got to move along now. So, by the way, this was brought to you by AerialTheAdventurer.com. Check out the website. Check me out on YouTube. I have a lot more videos on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram, all by the same name of this podcast. Um, and definitely follow me on Spotify for this podcast. Um, and as you know, you might be hearing random creatures because, well, I'm in my forest right now because this is where I come to think. This is one of my thinking places. So, let's do a little bit of speculative science. One time I was smoking some real good kush. And I was drinking. And I just zoned out. And what I realized was, no matter how far you zoom out or how far you zoom in, you're always going to see something. Like, if you zoom out from what you can see right now, you'll zoom out, you'll see, you know, houses. Zoom out, you'll see the city. Zoom out, you'll see the state. Some bodies of waters, rivers and such. Zoom out, you see the planet. Zoom out, you see a couple more planets. Zoom out, you see the solar system. Zoom out, you see the galaxy. Zoom out, you see a bunch of galaxies. Zoom out, more bunches of galaxies. (laughs) But different shapes and sizes. Zoom in from the same spot. You're going to see your skin. Zoom in, you're going to see the hairs. Zoom in, you're going to see the little crust of stuff on your skin and hairs. Zoom in, you're going to see eventually molecules, stuff like that. Zoom in, you're going to see bi um, micro um, organisms. Zoom in, you're going to see quarks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Atoms and quarks and things like that. And. We just don't have the power to keep zooming in or out. But what I do know is the more you zoom in and the more you zoom out, you are always going to have a different perspective on things. 
there is always going to be something there. Like that's another version of inf- infinite, infinity. Some people think of infinity only as like a measure of time, but that's kind of infinity too. Like, cause it doesn't stop. <laughs> like infinity is space too. Time and space. Yeah, you know I mean. So that's something I, I like to think about. Because since a kid, I've always imagined, like, different perspectives. And I can, like, I can see myself, like, looking from the eyes of other things. You know, not literally, of course. But I can imagine it um, by observing, you know, the things around it. I can imagine and just, you know, put it together in my mind. Like, if I was there, this is what it would look like. I mean, to the best of my ability, it might not be 100% accurate, but it's a start. So, I got four more minutes till I'm at 30 minutes. So, I'm going to go by um, one more thing. Not buy one more thing. You know what I mean? One more thing I was thinking about. It was 2017. I see my first solar eclipse. Maybe it was 2018. 2017. All this time that the moon was moving in front of the sun, you really wouldn't have known it until the moon was directly in front of the sun. Until then, you could see the moon partially moving in front of the sun if you had these special glasses on. And then you could see, oh, like, oh, it's not. The moon is right there. Going in front of the sun, piece by piece. But here's what I took out of that experience. How can something so close and so big as the moon be right over our heads and we don't even know it's there unless we had one special glasses on two we were looking for it the whole moon like it's pretty huge and it's pretty close and it could sit in broad daylight if it's by the sun and we wouldn't even know it's there Did anybody take that out of the experience? Or am I the only one? It's all good either way. That's why I'm Errol from EroltheAdventurer.com. And this is Errol the Adventurer, the podcast. Please follow me on Spotify. Please subscribe to me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. And all that other good shit. Follow me on Twitter. I'm there too. Um, but I, I usually post my stuff to Instagram and YouTube. First and foremost, I have updated the website in a, in a short time. Right now, it's an awesome landing page. But hell, check that out too. So And, and it also has links to my um, all my social media. So... Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate your time. And you'll know why if you go to my website. Because one of my first things is about time. I also have like little nature videos when I'm interacting with the animals. Because, you know, tech love the animals. You know what I'm saying? Um, Got my doll friends video. I call them my doll friends. Um, Not like dolls like... Barbie Playhouse dolls, like, dolphins, like, they were in the river. They were in the Indian Atlantic River, and I used to drink beer and sing and dance um, on the bank. It was like a concrete bank, concrete river bank, and they used to come hang out on this end and swim around and fish <laughs> and hang out, but, like, on one of my videos there, they just come up right up. Oh, the main one I call Kissy F. Um, which just means kiss the air, <laughs> you know, because she would always come pop up, you know, and see what the what I'm doing, <laughs> you know. So I call her kissy or kissy air, 
Uh -huh. And she come right up to me on a video. It's, it's pretty awesome. And I got other um, nature videos because, you know, I'm an adventurer and stuff. But this is Arrow the Adventurer from ArrowTheAdventurer.com. Thank you for listening. Tune back in. Peace.